with us. Appreciate you taking time to be in church this morning. I was looking at some scriptures and talking about how amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. And, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully we are a, an amiable, a friendly uh, church. And uh, the, that same passage says in 8410, Psalm 8410, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And uh, I hope that's our, uh, our, our desire and hope that's our way as Christians. And if you're not saved today, you can be saved. We praise the Lord for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins and was buried but rose again the third day according to the Scriptures to give us life, eternal life, and abundant life. We praise the Lord for that. So again, thank you for coming out. Uh, tonight at 5 o'clock, we'll meet again, but we'll do that at my house. If you don't know where I live, uh, see me or see, you know, see, see someone you think might know where I live after the service, all right? And uh, we don't keep it a secret, but just check, check after the service. 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock, we'll start at 5-ish. We want you to be there. If we see you pulling in a little late, we'll all look at you and stare and make bad faces and whatnot, but we'll wait for you. And uh, then you come, we'll sing a few songs We'll have some testimonies uh, tonight from our teens and uh, leaders. And uh, if, if you've got something you want to give, share as well, testify, we'll, we'll, we'll give that. We'll give them the first, first place. And then after that, if we think we still have some more time, we'll do that. Then we'll have some food and fellowship. Not a great feast, but just some hot dogs and, and hamburgers and uh, a few sides, water to drink. We need you to bring a chair for yourself. And uh, we'll have a few there, but if you could bring a chair for yourself, uh, that would be comfortable for you. Uh, that would be great. So 5 o'clock at my house uh, this evening. Wednesday night at 7, we'll be in Proverbs chapter 12 again. I hope you enjoyed my dad on Wednesday night. And uh, I know that he encouraged you to set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth here. And he's always a help and a blessing. I'm amazed at, at his age because he's almost, I mean, he's ancient. I mean, almost Ray's age. And uh, he's out there. So just... But no, he, uh, he still just digs. My dad digs and digs and digs in the scripture. He's never lost that zeal. He's never lost that desire. And uh, just still, he just, oh, ooh, that's good. We'll be talking on the phone and whatnot. And, and just looking for something in there that he hasn't seen yet or just seen from a different light. So I just appreciate that. I thank him uh, for coming to uh, minister to us. But we'll be here Wednesday night at 7 for Proverbs 12 again. Saturday at 8.30, men will uh, gather for some coffee and donuts, a little bit of fellowship, and sometimes some business and a little Bible study. If you can make it out for that, great. If you have other plans, then do that. But 8 at 30 here at the church on Saturday for the men. Next Sunday, Baptism Sunday. If you haven't been baptized yet, I mentioned that on Wednesday. It was this Sunday. It's next Sunday. If you haven't been saved, you haven't been baptized yet. Uh, that'd be a great time to do that. See me. Uh, let me know. So you just don't, don't just fly that on us. Throw that on us on Sunday morning, please. But uh, we'll keep the water in the tank Sunday night as well if you're not prepared Sunday morning or you forget or whatever it might be. Uh, but uh, if you've been saved, you haven't been baptized yet, I would encourage you to do so. Follow the Lord and believers baptism. And um, if you have children, some of you have mentioned to me, you've talked to me about your children. And of course, they're terrified to talk to me, but I'll try to, I'll try to be not terrifying as much as possible. And uh, we'll talk to them about that as well. So j- just let us know, let me know, and uh, we'll do that on next uh, Sunday. Vacation Bible School starts on the 20th, so not this Monday, but next Monday. Uh, and uh, it goes through the 23rd. Uh, the times for that are 10 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., Ages are 5 to 11. There's a flyer as you go out the door, a couple of postcards uh, sitting up there as you go out the door in the track rack. If you know someone uh, that, that you would like to invite, you know, maybe a neighborhood or a st- anyone, uh, grab one of these, hand them to that, and just give them the information. You can download the form on our website to register, or they can just come here on Monday morning and, and get registered. And uh, just, it'll just you know, speed up the process if they already have the form uh, filled out, but it'll be all right. And so encourage you to uh, get, get some of these. And uh, they're going to set the tent up for that on July 18th at 5 o'clock. That's a Saturday. So I tell you what, I'm going to back up here for a second. Let's cancel our men's thing in the morning on Saturday. And uh, we'll just, if you can come out on that evening, we'll just do that in the evening. So no men's deal on. Come out and set up the tent if you can. It, more hands, the merrier. And that'll be at 5 o'clock uh, on the 18th next Saturday. So vacation Bible school good thing kids get saved and they can live for jesus the rest of their life all right 
and uh, they can go to heaven. They can be with the Lord forever. So I encourage you to grab one or, or a few of those. We hit the whole Tullamore neighborhood yesterday and the Foxtail neighborhood. Appreciate those that came out and uh, helped with that. But uh, if you have someone, make sure you grab that. And then the, just last thing for, for the uh, announcements, the uh, next youth meeting is on July 31st. So if you have teenagers or you are a teenager, mark that down, next youth activity here at the church on July 31st at 7 p.m. So uh, uh, several things there going on, and then we're getting into August. We've got a few things going on, and we had a great week last week at camp. We'll talk about a little bit about that this morning. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, tonight, uh, but just in- encourage you to participate in these things as they apply uh, to you and pray for, pray for them. If you have an offering, uh, you can put that in the box in the back or don't forget our push pay app that you can download and give uh, through that. All right, if you have a Bible this morning, go to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter number 32. While you're turning there, it's good to have the Hansons back. Uh, Lisa's here and uh, Derek's dropping off a car and picking up a car and And uh, he'll be back in town again on Monday, I believe it is. But just good to have them back for a little bit. And uh, they need to take care of some things while they're back. Pray they can get that all taken care of. And then pray they can get back to Chile. And uh, that, you know, just all this COVID stuff would would die down at least enough to get them uh, back there and uh, serving in the place where the Lord has called them to be. But just, I'm I'm glad they're, I'm glad she's here. And I'm glad they're back in the area. And uh, it was good to see them on, on Tuesday and uh, praise the Lord for that. Jeremiah chapter 32 this morning, and we've been going through Genesis, we've been talking about some of those things, and I didn't have a lot of direction yet on, on that, and where to go next, or to continue a little bit there, and we could spend a month of Sundays talking about Joseph, and we've already talked about some of those things with Joseph, how that God meant those things for uh, good when everybody else thought they were bad, and uh, so just just a side thing today, though, uh, just in, in thinking and praying and considering our last week that we had, uh, we had a great week of camp last week, and uh, or this uh, last week, yeah. And uh, we had 105 or six or seven uh, teenagers here, and we had about 25 workers here, I think, or 30 workers here. And then just uh, publicly want to thank Brother Adam and and Pastor Hoover and Miss Murphy and uh, Brother Drew and Miss Heather and the, the guards and just all the the work going into that. But uh, what a great week at camp. And as I, as I considered all the good things there that happened and uh, tried to focus on those and did that again this morning, uh, just, just the, the thought that I had when all that that was going on was here in Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse number 17. And Jeremiah here is speaking and, and he says, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. There's nothing too hard for thee. And uh, Jerusalem here in Jeremiah is besieged by the Chaldeans. And uh, these Babylonian armies are coming in and they're lying waste to Israel, but in particular at this time now Jerusalem. And uh, so at this time though, God gives Jeremiah a command. He says, go go buy a field. (laughs) Go buy a field in the land, in Jerusalem, or in that area, excuse me. And, uh, you know, when you, when you read this, you might not catch it, but for many it was improbable that Israel would ever occupy the land again. And for most it was impossible that Israel would ever occupy the land again. Uh, but Jeremiah, uh, God's man, and what, what a man of God Jeremiah is. I mean, if you read Jeremiah, it's not the most interesting book in the sense of all these miracles and activity and decisions for the lord for for righteousness and the church isn't you know if you would the synagogue or the tabernacle isn't filled with worship and praise as you would like it to be in fact jeremiah if if in today's society and in really most societies as a preacher was a failure in their eyes but god had him stand and say, thus saith the Lord. And Jeremiah believed the promises of God. And Jeremiah believed the promise of God that indeed the captivity of Israel would return and they would once again possess the land and the city. And so the Lord, the Lord in fact, in this passage, after saying that and after Jeremiah praising him for a while and speaking about his greatness and his wonder and you see that in verse number 18 all the way down through 25 the bible says in verse 26 then came the word of the lord unto jeremiah saying behold 
I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And the obvious answer for the student of Scripture or the reader of Scripture is, is an emphatic, no. No, there, there's, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. There's nothing too hard for thee, O Lord. But, boy, I mean, don't our hearts say that and then quickly wander from that? And, and our faith wavers and we doubt and our hearts wander and our, and our minds, they, they just they float off into thoughts of defeat and doubt and so quickly. And Jeremiah believes this promise and I think he's trying to convince him a little bit about that promise. And again, we, we won't take time to read all of it, but speaking about the mighty God, let's just read verse 18 and, and verse number 19. Thou showest loving kindness unto thousands and recompensest the iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them. The great, the mighty God, the Lord of hosts is his name. Great in counsel, mighty in work for thy eyes are open upon the ways of the sons of men to give everyone according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings i mean Jer jeremiah is trying to stay in faith and he's trying to keep himself from doubting and he's reminding of these things but but just we we, we wander so quickly but this morning i just want to i just want to say once again there is nothing too hard for the lord there's nothing too hard for him and i want to pray and then i want to speak on this and let's pray father thank you again for jesus christ and we thank you again for uh, how he became flesh and dwelt among us and was tempted in all points like as we are yet without sin and and suffering and bleeding and dying giving his life for our sins laying it down and then being buried but rising again the th third day according to the scripture and overcoming sin and overcoming death and and now setting at the right hand of the throne of god the father ever living to make intercession for us and calling those calling those to salvation and lord uh, we, we we see that we believe that and lord if there's someone here who doesn't i pray that they would and i pray today you'd even speak to their heart as only you can through your word and through your holy spirit and lord use me as a vessel meet for your use and and lord i just you know i i'm nothing without you i i, I can't do anything i'm uh, completely amazed that you would uh, even use me but thank you i'm asking that you would again this morning and Lord, praise you for the great week that we had, but, but now we look forward to you doing more great things and mighty things because that's what you are and that's who you are. We thank you, Lord. Uh, help us in our doubts. Help us in our fears. Lord, help us as we waver and wander. Help us as we you know, tremble at the things of this earth and the people of this earth and the issues of this earth. And Lord, may we, may we set our affection on you and our love on you as you have on us. Lord, thank you for our children's ministries downstairs, our nursery and our junior church. I pray you'd encourage our laborers. Thank you for them. I pray our children learn of you and, and uh, be saved and uh, serve you, never turning to the right hand or the left. Thank you, Lord. And then just help us again to worship you in spirit and in truth. And, and uh, we love you, Lord. Thank you for loving us. And pray this in Jesus' name, believing. Amen. Amen. And, and so this passage, and I, you know, I, I can only encourage you to take a few moments to read it and understand again that Israel is in this beginning phases of this Babylonian captivity and, and God is you know, bringing this city into captivity, which he's going to do for uh, 70 years through the reigns of, of various uh, kings and rulers of the land at this time. And Nebuchadnezzar being that first one, he's mentioned in verse number uh, one. And we see him in Daniel, of course, and, and other passages as well. But, but at this time, uh, you know, it's a great strait. It's a great difficulty. It's a, it's a great issue. And, and, and what I want to say, first of all, this morning is that there is no problem too hard for the Lord. That there's just, there's just no problem too hard for the Lord. And, you know, if I could break that down, there'd be so many subcategories of that that we wouldn't have time to look at all of them. But in a general, general rule, there's, there's no problem that, it, that is too hard uh, for the Lord. Look over to Genesis chapter number 18. You can come, come, leave Jeremiah 32, but look at Genesis chapter number 18. And, and, and here in Genesis 18, we kind of have this first glimpse of this you know, thought, this statement, Genesis chapter number 18, and we've looked at this, and Sarah's, Sarah's going to have a baby, and, uh, and God's going to give that to her through Abraham, and Genesis 18 and verse number 
13, the Bible says here, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Now notice verse 14. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for the Lord? And he says, At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. And, and, and she does. That's exactly uh, what happens is she has a, a son according to the uh, word of the Lord there. And, I, and I'm just saying, first of all, there is no problem too hard for the Lord. You know, it was preposterous in Jeremiah's day to go buy a field in Israel at this time. Preposterous. In fact, uh, that's probably exactly why his nephew, it looks like, I think it was his nephew, wanted to get rid of the field. Hey man, we're not coming back here. I don't need this anymore. Let's see if I can sell it to someone. <laughs> God moving the heart, he gets, sends him to Jeremiah, and Jeremiah then knows, man, this is certainly the word of the Lord. God had told him that, and now he comes to him, he says, hey, buy my field. And Jeremiah does, he buys this field here, and he seals it, all the stuff that you would go through today in a title company, they have their evidences of purchase and their sealing of those decrees and whatnot in Jeremiah chapter number 32, but I, I'm just saying it was preposterous, and the preposterous is not a problem with God. In fact, sometimes... What God asks us to do through the Scriptures, through His Spirit, seems preposterous. It most certainly does to the world. It certainly does to the natural man. It does to the flesh. But, but to God, there, there's no problem too hard for the Lord. Just, uh, you know, camp this week. They had a meeting last week. week before the last last. Last, not Thursday, this last, but you know, 10 days ago, Thursday, Friday. And at North, the, the, the board of the camp, and they were getting ready to shut it down. And with all the COVID stuff and the fears there and, and whatnot, and, and they voted, they were going to vote, and John, the director down here at Ross Point Camp, he stood up for camp. He stood up for our camp. And uh, there was a couple guys that weren't at that meeting. It was a Zoom-type meeting, and Probably had they been there, we, we would have been canceled. That's the understanding I have. They would have just said, no, no. People coming into town on Saturday, forget it. Tell them not to come. People leaving Sunday morning, tell them not to come. We're not having camp next week. But between those guys not showing up and John standing up, we were able to have camp last week. And he said, that's, that's, that's nothing. You're right. To the Lord, it's nothing. <laughs> it's nothing. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. And I look at that, and I was talking to some of the pastors, and you know, you don't want to get, we're not, we're not saying this puffed up, we're not saying this in pride, we're not saying this as we are the center of the universe, because we're not, but God loves us as His children, and, and He loves us as His, as His church, and he, he loves us as we lift up and hold up the Word of God, and He, he loves when His Word is preached, and I'm just going to tell you, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm so confident that the Lord, the Lord loves His children, the Lord loves children, isn't that evident in the scriptures? I mean, um, I mean, from from the beginning all the way. I mean, you think about Christ's ministry when he would call the little children unto him, and he would hold them, and he would speak of their faith and wanna. And God loves children, and just 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 so we're all very well, well aware, teens are still children, right? They are. We're children, but teens teens are still children, and and there's no problem. There's no problem too hard for the Lord. We got the word that. Essentially, we were the only camp that Ross Point Camp is going to have this week. We're the only camp. There's no more camps. And as you, you know, I, I got my ear to the ground, and I'm talking to other pastors and prior to camp and then during the camp, the camp and, and they have their friends and family and whatnot that are in the ministry and such, and there weren't camps this year. There weren't camps this year. We had camp. It was, why? Because there's nothing too hard. So God doesn't care about them. Oh, He does care about them. But just we just forged forward, and we had people who were standing up and speaking up and and for and praying, and praying. And, and I, I I just I'm saying that we aren't the center of the universe. But I'm telling you that there was there was nothing more important going on this week in the Northwest. I'm just, I'm just there was there was nothing more important going on in the Northwest. This this. This, this, this last week. So all my, no, no, there was nothing. Then God looking down on 150 people or so at a little camp in, 
in Post Falls, Idaho on the Spokane River where the, where the gospel was being preached and righteousness was being preached and Jesus Christ was being preached and His Word was being preached and He was being exalted and He loves that. And I'm just saying there's nothing, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. We, we might say in our vernacular, you know, someone asks us to do something and we say, oh, no, no problem. When in reality, we're processing that and we're going, what did I just say? <laughs> that is very problematic. I don't have a solution for that. It's going to take my time. It's going to take too much money. It's going to take too much. That is a problem. But we just say, ah, no, no, no problem, man. No problem. But you know, when God says no problem, you know what it is? It's no problem. It's just, it's just no problem. You know, you think about I just, just as I was just, you know, just perusing the Bible in my thoughts, and of course, of course, most of this book is about a people, Israel. It's, it's just it, most of it. It's about a people, Israel, and how God's going to deal with them. And here we have this, you know, we have this parenthesis right now called the church, and and we're praising the Lord for that, and He still cares about His people, Israel. Just don't we just well, we want to emphasize that? We have emphasized that in the last couple weeks again, but he, they are still the apple of His eye. He still loves that lane. He still loves that people, even though at this time they're enemies of the gospel. They still can get saved by believing on Jesus Christ and receiving Him as their Savior. Right? Come on. Blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become. But then all, so then all Israel shall be saved. And, I, and I'm just saying that as I peruse the history of Israel, I'm just thinking, you know, here, here, here they are, and, and uh, pretty soon in the book, we're, we're in Genesis, but just in, in the book, we're going to get to Exodus. And Exodus is just, it's just a series of problems for Israel <laughs> and his leaders. But, you know, they get into captivity in, is, uh, in Egypt, and then they get out of that rule of Pharaoh, and we'll talk about that in a second. But, I mean, here they are, they're leaving, and God says, all right, come on here and worship me, and I want you to take everything, and I want you to even to spoil the Egyptians, and you're going to use their goods to worship me. And here they go, they're all a-humming, and the hands are raised, the Bible says, they left with a high hand, <laughs> and the Red Sea. You know, God, God didn't go, oh, 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 Red Sea, oh, what? Right? right? He didn't sweat. He didn't, he, he just went, right? He parted it. Parted it. You know, and, and, you know if you, I don't know if you, some of you don't know this, but the, the, the theologians today say it was the Reed Sea. There was a different route that they took. They didn't go through the Red Sea. That wouldn't make any sense, but they went through the, that was easier for the Lord to, part. there's nothing too hard for God. If it was the Pacific Ocean, they could have walked across it. But, but it, was the, it was the, you know, the funny thing about that is that later Pharaoh's armies drown. So, so if that wasn't hard for God to, you know, it was pretty difficult to drown a bunch of armies in a reed sea. Right? Oh no, we're up to our knees. What do we do? Either way, it's a big deal. But there's nothing too hard for God. And they get through that. And then there's, there's no water. Hit the rock. Speak to the rock. Gushes. Gushes out. Gushes out. We don't have any food. Manna, quail, right? So it's coming out their nostrils. That there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Oh, oh, we're done with this wilderness wandering business. All right, let's go. Jordan, overflowing her banks. Right? Priests set their foot on that water and it parts and they walk across it and the priests finally see everybody goes. They come back. They set those stones of memorial up and the children of Israel get to Jericho. Oh, no, Jericho. What are we going to do? March around it. March around it? What's that going to do? Well, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Just time after time after time after time. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. You, you just Christ's ministry. <laughs> just time after time, people complaining or murmuring or wondering. And just you know, again, oh Lord, they're they're faint and they got no food. What should we do? Well, what do you got? What do you got? 200 penny worth of bread. What's that sufficient? <laughs> no problem. No problem. Why? 
because there is nothing too hard for the Lord. You think about this. God knew the solution to the problem before you knew you had the problem. God knew the solution to your problem before you knew you had the problem. Look, if you would, over to Psalm and chapter, or Isaiah chapter 46. Isaiah chapter 46. God, God knew, you, knew the solution before you knew you had the problem. Isaiah 46. Look at verse number 9. <clears throat> Remember the former things of old. For I am God. So God's speaking here. God is you know, directly speaking to Isaiah and his people here. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. <laughs> Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. He knows. He knows. He knows. The end from the beginning. Seeing the end from the beginning with a word that is eternal, He gives it to us. And, and sometimes we wonder, and it looks like God is controlling everything, and He is in control, but He sees how man exerted or submitted His will to or for against God. And so He knew those things, and He moved men, and He helped issues, and He uh, solved problems that way he knew the end from the beginning and he declares it from ancient and again i'm just saying that god knew the solution before you knew you had the problem the impossible is possible with god the impossible is possible with god and he said in Luke chapter 18 and verse 27, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. <laughs> the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. So what is it? There's no problem too hard for the Lord. There may be things that God will not fix. But there is nothing that he cannot fix. There's things that he will not do. And so that causes us to go, why, Lord? And I don't know always why. The general answer, and one of the right answers is, he's God. He's God. He knows. What we think that he should fix sometimes, he, he doesn't because he's God. And he knows. There may be things that God will not fix. But there's nothing that He cannot fix. Your marriage, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Your children, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Your health, your job, your housing, your finances, they're not too hard for the Lord. Now, I'm just telling you, we, we, we get ourselves in a lot of places that we shouldn't and we want God to rescue us, and, and He can. And He may. But there's nothing too hard for Him. There's nothing too hard for Him. He loves you as His child. And he wants the best for you, doesn't He? Well, He wants the best for us. And there's nothing too hard for the Lord. No problem is too hard for the Lord. Number two, no person is too hard for the Lord. This is, this is a simple message this morning. It's not a long message. There, there's no person too hard for the Lord. My, in, in Jeremiah, we won't have to turn back there, but, but uh, you know, there, there, was a, there were some people that were an issue. And there's, there's no person that's too hard for the Lord. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, but to point number three, but but you know Zedekiah, Nebuchadnezzar, they're they're not they're not a problem for the Lord. There's no person too hard for the Lord. 
When you read the scriptures and you do a simple search on hard, and there's just maybe like 67, 60 or 70 references to hard, the word hard. There's hardness, there's hardened, there's others, but just hard. You, you find out that there's some real hard hearts out there. You find out that there's some real hard wills out there. You find out that there's some real hard people be, be hardened by the deceitfulness of, of sin out there. But I'm, I'm just saying, there's no person too hard for the Lord. Look over to 2 Samuel chapter number 3. David, David faced some hard people in his life. Oh my word. <laughs> I mean, I would, say, I would say Saul was a hard person. King Saul. King Saul was a hard person to deal with. He, he, uh, he was an angry man. He was a liar and deceiver. And uh, he lacked courage many times. He was God's chosen. He gave them what they wanted, a king, like all the other nations. Uh, and yet God had a better man, a man that David says he liked me to make me king over Israel. David had to deal with Saul. Saul was a hard person. I would say Goliath was a hard person. Would you agree? Goliath was... How about the rest of those giants that he faced? They were, they were hard people that, that David faced. I would say, um, uh, oh, Abigail's husband was a hard person. I'm just saying David dealt with some hard people. And these sons of Zeruai here in 2 Samuel 3, it says they were hard. 2 Samuel 3, look at verse number uh, 39. And I am this day weak, through ano uh, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. And Joab and Abishai and these sons of Zeruiah just... They were for him, and they knew some things about him, but they also, boy, they wreaked some havoc in David's heart. <laughs> and he says, they're just, they're just hard. They're too hard for me. And I'm just saying, when men and women and children are too hard for you, you know what? There's no person too hard for the Lord. God's got a wrench, someone said one time, for every nut. <laughs> boy, there's a lot of nuts, aren't there? Yeah. God saves a lot of nuts. Puts them in his family. God's got a wrench for every nut. He's got a nest for every bird. There's some strange birds in Christianity, isn't there? And God has a nest for every one of them. God is a help for the helpless, a hope for the hopeless, a father to the fatherless, a rest for the weary, strength for the weak, a physician to the sick. He is the need for the needy. There is no person too hard for the Lord. This week at camp, we had, uh, we had three kids get saved that we know of. Made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ. Um, Joel and Ashton and Micah. And, um, you know, a couple, couple of them been in church for a while. Couple, and uh, one's pretty new to church and has a Roman Catholic background. And just she didn't really know. Micah didn't really know. And, and on that fourth night, I think it was, she... In their devotions, we have a God and I time, we call it after the services, for you know, five to 15 minutes or so, and just a time to review and kind of take the thoughts there and, and you know, stew on them a little bit. And uh, as Miss Stisser was going through the, Mrs. Stisser was going through the, you know, giving testimonies and whatnot, she didn't have a testimony of salvation. She had a lot of questions. And, Molly, she pushed all, she said, all right, you all go out, go outside the cabin here and I'm going to deal with her here and just question after question after question. She answered them and she bowed her head and professed Jesus Christ and confessed Jesus Christ as her Savior. What, what I'm saying is each one of those kids, Joel and Ashton and, and, and Micah, they had different issues and different problems, just like you. Different age than you, maybe same age as some of you, but I'm just saying God's got a wrench for every nut, and there is no person too hard for the Lord. You ever look at someone, you say, man, they're just so hard. Oh, they're just so hard. You, you tell them about Jesus, and maybe you don't even have to get to Jesus. You, you, just, you just mentioned, we went to church on Sunday morning. I don't, I don't want any of that. We're, we're, we're good. As long as you don't bring up that, we're good. Right? So you, you, you know, you, you probably have one of those or two of those or maybe it's all of those in your family besides you. 
All right, we, we can talk about the weather, we can talk about the COVID, we can talk about riots, we can talk about the news, but we do not talk about Jesus Christ here. We don't talk about that church business. And you say, you know what you say? Man, they're hard. And you know what they are? They're hard. That's why you say it. But, but you are hard. You are hard. Some of you are harder than others. For, for us to crack the code, if you would, or for some other preacher or, or junior church worker or Sunday school teacher or vacation Bible school or youth worker or whatever worker it might have been, you are hard to crack. <laughs> but no person is too hard for the Lord. And He sends His sweet spirit and His word that's like a fire and like a hammer to break that rock in pieces and to break that stone up to get the seed of the Word of God planted in there that it might bring forth fruit unto eternal life. I'm just saying, there's no problem too hard for the Lord. There's no person too hard for the Lord. And then probably because of the passage here in Jeremiah 32, and again, we're not turning back there, we just don't need to. It's, I don't want to take the time to read all of it this morning, but there's no politician or principality or power too hard for the Lord. While that's very applicable to Jeremiah chapter 32, all these are very applicable to today as well, aren't they? There's no politician, no principality or power too hard for the Lord. As we mentioned, not Zedekiah. He's the king in that day, in that land. And if you read it in Jeremiah chapter number 32, he puts, Israel in a, uh, me, he puts uh, Jeremiah in a prison just for preaching righteousness. God takes care of him. What do you mean? He slew his sons before his eyes. And then he lost his eyes. So that doesn't happen to every person. It doesn't. But it happened to Zedekiah. Nebuchadnezzar. You know, you know God calls him in Jeremiah 27? My servant. You, you, Nebu, whom he would he slew and whom he would he kept alive and not in righteousness. God says he's my servant. Well, why? Well, because the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, and as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. I've looked at that verse, Proverbs 21, 1, so many times. I mean, I really have. I've turned that over. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. You know, you know what God says? As, as, as difficult as it was for me to take Jordan River and go, or to carve out the canyon that the river runs through in the Grand Canyon. And by the way, God did that. Just like that. And by the way, that wasn't too hard for the Lord. It, was, it wasn't too hard for the Lord. J just like that, I can take a king's heart and just and turn it. We say, well, why, why doesn't he? And why? He does. He does. How do we know? Because as the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the rivers of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. He does. It's just not always the way we think he should. But he is accomplishing his will. He's accomplishing his purpose. We look at what's going on right now, and we say, well, God, God can't be in control. Oh, he is. He is. And we should not be surprised at the nations gathering together against God. The Bible is very clear time after time after time that this is the way it's going to be before he returns for his own and then with his own as king of kings and lord of lords and i'm just saying no politician not pharaoh not ahab not nebuchadnezzar not any king of israel not any king of any land that's ever ruled not nero not anyone not trump not putin not castro not hussein not Z, or whatever his name over in China, or the guy in North Korea. can't pronounce their name, so just them. Spaceman, or rocket man, or whatever it is. He is not too hard for the Lord. In fact, I love Hebrews chapter 2, and I want you to turn there, just, just Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2 and verse number 14. No power, no power. No power is too hard for the Lord. I think God sees the nations flexing their muscles sometimes, and He just, oh, He might literally yawn. I mean, I'm being serious. Why? He says the nations are as a drop in a bucket. 
you put them all together for all of history, drop. That's, that's all God says about it. That, that's, that's all they are. They're used to accomplish His purpose or to be redeemed if they would believe on Jesus Christ personally, individually. I love Hebrews 2. Look at, I love Hebrews. Believe Hebrews 2, look at verse number 14. Speaking of Jesus, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, He also, speaking of Jesus, He also Himself likewise took part of the same. Why? Huh. That He through death might destroy Him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. What, what, what am I saying? I'm saying there's no politician, no principality, nor power that is too hard for the Lord. He destroyed Him that had the power of death, that is the devil. How do you do that? Well, by, by being crucified, by being buried, by, being, by rising again the third day according to the Scriptures. And one day He is coming back and He is going to stamp out that devil. I mean, once and for all. But to say that the devil has been stamped out yet is foolish. He's very active. He's our adversary. Walking about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. To put in fear, and put in fear of that death, and put them in bondage. But Jesus Christ, he destroyed him. Why? Because there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Job, I just recently read Job. I don't like reading Job. I'm just being honest. I just don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't like the, I don't like the banter. I mean, I know it happened. It's just, I don't like seeing friends attack friends like that I, I don't i don't like that i don't like the problems i don't like to think about going through what he had to go through i don't i don't like thinking about that but but it's in the bible and there's much there for us you get to the end of job after the lord has spoken his part and job says in verse four chapter 42 and verse one then job answered the lord and said in verse two here's what he said after all that was said and after all that was done here's what he said i know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. <laughs> I know that thou canst do. Hey, you might not. You might not. But I know that thou canst do everything and that no thought can be withholden from thee. And, and it says after that that Job, he prayed for his friend and their captivity was turned. And of course, Job's captivity, if you would, was turned and his health was restored and his relationship with his wife was restored and his family was restored with more children and more good than he ever had before. And if you read Jeremiah chapter number 32, you find out that God says, look, I am going to restore this land and they are going to be in this land and they are going to be my people and I will give them an everlasting covenant that will withstand forever. <laughs> and he's going to do that. He's going to do that. He's still going to do that. Why? Because there's nothing too hard for the Lord. And so I would say to you this morning, what problem, what person, what power is too hard for you? What problem, what person, what power are you facing that seems insurmountable? There's nothing too hard for the Lord. It wasn't in Jeremiah's life, and that same God that of Jeremiah is your God. And there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Give it to Him. Yield to Him. Take His Word as, as that promise that it is and act upon it. Why? Because there's nothing too hard for the Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank You again for Your Word. Lord, you, you encouraged me in this passage uh, well, again this morning and in the last couple days. And uh, I, I, I need this. And uh, I got problems. Well, I am a problem. But I got them. And I know that there's nothing too hard for you. I know that, but I doubt that sometimes. My actions, my words, they, they, they don't show faith. And so I, I would say, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, there's some people that I look at and I go, man, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to handle that. But I know that there's no person that's too hard for you, Lord. Saved or lost. 
lost to be saved. There's no person that's too hard for you. The saved with their issues and difficulties and trials, there's, there's nothing too hard for you. Lord, there's no politician. There's no principality. There's no power that you've sweat over. And I, I pray for help in believing that. Lord, as we see this world and the turmoil that it is, we, we pray thy will be done. Lord, help us to be good with that. <laughs> help, it, it is good. Help us to be good with that. Help us to see that. Lord, what we are facing, whatever problem, whatever person, whatever power, Lord, may we be reminded. May we be reminded, not just today, but may we be reminded that there is nothing too hard for Thee. And I pray this all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, believing. Amen. We're going to stand, we're going to sing before, a song before we're dismissed today. What number, sweetie? 375. 175, 175, let's stand. Maybe, maybe you got someone today, something today that's over you. Just over you. It's overcome you. It's caused you to doubt. It's caused you to wander. It's caused you to waver. I'd encourage you to give it to the Lord. I'd take time and I'd come down to an altar and I'd give it to the Lord. Or I'd stand right where I'm at and miss a stanza of singing, but give it to the Lord. Understand that there's no thing too hard. Oh, yeah. 175, we'll sing and abide with me. Let's sing out here on the verse. Abide with me. Just remember that, and I don't know what you have going on or what will be going on, but something is, something will be, and uh, let's remember that there's nothing too hard uh, for the Lord. Thanks for coming out. I hope you'll join us tonight again at 5 at our house uh, for some food, fellowship, testimony, and singing, and uh, bring a chair if you're going to come. I think just be a more comfortable. Uh, on your way out, grab a Vacation Bible School uh, flyer or, or card if, if you know someone who would